What's his name? Griffin? He, Ken. You know, he's going to buy, like, the Miami Marlins and the rest of, of the board as well. Yeah. Ken Griffin, do we know what he's doing? Do we know his 50 to 1 leverage on these transactions? Well, guys, I don't know how to say this, but I just watched Bloomberg, and I'm going to share with you in a second. Crazy news just broke the media. Guys, hedge funds are extremely over leveraged, 50 to 1 ratio at this point. And the Federal Reserve should step in most likely and bail them out. The reason for it is that this time around, the Federal Reserve will not allow any of the hedge funds to fail. But on a serious story today, which harkens back to leverage in hedge funds, and we're going to talk to her right now about risks and shadows and opaqueness that's out there from two years ago, or might I suggest July of 1998 as well. I'm going to go right to the top of your story. How leveraged is the leverage discussion of a bond transaction? Listen, a lot of these trades are very significantly leveraged sometimes 50 to 1 or more. And the reason this is always okay is because it's in the Treasury market. This is the most safe liquid market <clears throat> in the world. Until it moves. Until it moves. And now it's moving quite violently, as we know. And so we know that ever since the LDI blowups that we saw earlier in the UK, uh, banks have been asking hedge funds to cool it, essentially. They've been asking for more margin. They've been reducing risk. But listen, a lot of this leverage comes from repo markets, sometimes sponsored repo, which is um, money market funds. So there are a lot of worries here under the right. surface in Treasury markets. Gensler wants opa he wants clarity here. We got opacity in that. We understand we had a banking crisis because we really didn't know what was going on at SVB. Do we what know what's what's his name? Griffin? He, Ken. You know, he's going to buy like the Miami Marlins and the rest of, of the board as well. Yeah. Ken Griffin, do we know what he's doing? Do we know his 50 to 1 leverage on these transactions? Listen, the, these are called basis trades. They're fairly <coughs> simple trades that arbitrage the difference between Treasury futures and spot. Citadel, Millennium, Exodus Point, Capula, Alphadine, these are some of the biggest players in this space. Our sources say that Citadel is not as leveraged to the trade as they have traditionally been in the past or as peak leverage has kind of gone before. But we know, guys, not only has this caused major losses among hedge funds in the past, the reason it's a problem is it's caused the Fed to step in. In. People forget that in 2020 the Fed has had to step in on this trade. And Are they stepping in in 2023? Do we know that within well, the reporting? I think that's a lot of the problem here and why there's a worry here. There's a kind of implicit understanding in the market that the Fed does step in. They have to step in. The hiccups in the Treasury market are not of the making of the hedge funds this time. It's of Washington. Yeah. However, uh, it's not clear that the Fed wants to bail out hedge funds again. Just to be clear, why would the Fed have to step in? And what would you? Why, what would, why would that be called a bailout of hedge funds? Well, it's interesting because in 2020, when the Fed stepped in, there was the pandemic going on. So it was more about the pandemic and less about the hedge funds. What's less explained is 2019, when they had to step into repo markets because of more drastic movements. And again, a lot of these uh, hedge funds were levered towards the trade. This time around, if there were any major issues, you could say, well, we didn't cause the Treasury market volatility but, and we didn't uh, cause the uh, downgrade. Uh, I want to make this clear. Are there major issues now or are we reporting that there seem to be shadows from two years ago? No, there, may, there are issues now. There are issues. <laughs> There's, the reason there are issues is not that these trades are blowing up right now or anything like that. It's the issue that what underpins these trades is uh, is repo leverage and this idea that if there were any potential downgrade in the Treasury, then all of the collateral underpinning these trades are not worth what they were yesterday. So there, there are real issues in the market that the debt ceiling does exacerbate to some degree. But again, these are highly levered trades that, and a lot of the leverage is bilateral. So it's very, very opaque. Guys, changes have been planned or talked about since the Obama administration. It's not really changed much at all. And when you see such violent moves in Treasury markets, that's when banks and regulators start to ask questions. Is there a danger, though, that we're blaming hedge funds for something that is the responsibility of politicians in Washington? Washington and poor policymakers at the Federal Reserve? It's not blame per se. This is kind of a market structure question. There have been a lot of uh, calls in recent years to make this market more transparent, and it and it hasn't really gone that way. <laughs> and so when we're thinking about what happens now and the potential risks, I think, you know, even if you're all clear, we have to remember that this is a market with a history of blow-ups. This is a market that there have been asks for change. And, you know, by the way, it could be forgotten about if they have a debt ceiling uh, compromise here. I'm freaking believable. They mentioned Citadel, they mentioned Ken Griffin, they mentioned all of the big players on Wall Street and they mentioned how they structure their deals, how they provide collateral 
which is the biggest risk over here according to Bloomberg. This collateral might not actually worth what it's supposed to be and follow up the circle. They borrow funds to buy treasuries, but because they over leverage themselves, they can actually hurt the rating of the treasury, which will hurt the value of the collateral they provided and crash the market. So essentially, <laughs> I don't know how, how easier to explain this, but they're doing something and they're hurting themselves doing so. Unfreaking believable, unrealizing it. What they actually mention is 50 to 1 leverage. What this actually means, I can borrow 50 points based on one asset value of my own assets. Just think about what we're even speaking about. This is way over leverage positions in market in which the banks, some of them are failing. We're having debt ceiling, the government close to default. Treasury is running out of money close to June 1st, most likely, according to the recent news, right? If you look at the pools last week for the expectations of the next rate hike, it will be 0% almost expectations. But now because of this PCE number, well guys, now the expectations are 50% approximately expectations for another rate hike. I don't want to get into details, 25 basis points, 50 basis points. Inflation is going up again, which is a bad news for the hedge funds. And like some of the hosts on Bloomberg, like me in general, as well asking why the hedge fund should be bailed out. Why? They explained that the Federal Reserve will not let the hedge funds to fail, which is a sad news. Where is the free and fair market, as you may have guessed, right? The issue with this, according to them, is that they're holding a giant portion of the actual treasuries. So if you see some of these major shareholders of the treasuries failed, this will create a potential position for downgrading the treasuries itself, which will downgrade the value of the treasuries. Remember treasury, when the debt ceiling is actually deal is set, the treasury will issue 700, 600 billion dollars approximately of new treasuries. And they want to issue them with greater value. Just think about if some event like this, crazy margin calls, over leverage positions, destroy not only the hedge funds, but the value of the treasuries, the treasury could lose. You know, just think about their issuing. They had plans to issue 700 billion dollars worth of treasuries, but because this downgrade happens on the treasuries, they could be worth at the time of issuing like 400, 500. So this means that they have to issue more just to go back at the previous levels of the expected capital that's supposed to be raised, right? I'm freaking believable. The chain reaction here is magnificent. Like finance engineering in real time, my dear friends. Yeah.